All righty, so let's get started. Um, so we know the theme verse, which is Joshua 1.9. Um, I do want to look over it so we don't forget it. So if Josh can read that for us, that would be great. Men go up and smite I, and make not all the people to labor 
thither, for they are but few. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men. For they chased them from before the gate even unto Shebron, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the eventide, he and the elders of Israel, and put dust upon their heads. We take a look at verse 6. Uh, it mentions how Joshua tore, well, on my version, I'm looking at that NIV, it says tore. Uh, in the King James Version, it says rent. And I, when I, we were on the way here, I told all the, oh, wow, what does the rent mean? He's like, what do you mean? I don't know what rent means. He was thinking that I was meeting the house for it. <laughs> and I was like, no, that's not what I'm talking about. You know, Joshua. like Joshua. And then, that's when uh, he, he started telling me a little bit, and I was like, wow, they would actually, like, of how the grief he felt, he would actually tore off his clothes. And that reminded me of some situations when we've gone through that. When I mean, we don't tore our clothes off, but we are going through that situation. We are, we, nothing can, you know, even if you go to someone, someone is just like, yeah, you know, we are like Alejandra said, you know, it's easy, it's easy said than done. And that's the same thing that happens when, um, what I see is it's just Joshua was so dismayed, he was so discouraged, like, man, we failed, we, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't um, uh, win, or we didn't, you know, the battle wasn't win. Could we look at, uh, skip to verse 10 and 11? It says, what, I'm reading that and I read, the Lord said to Joshua, stand up, what are you doing down on your face? Israel has sinned, they have violated my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. They have taken some of my devoted things that they have stolen. They have, they have lied. They have put them with their own possessions. That's what Brian was saying, that that's why he didn't win that battle, because, uh, with I, because someone has stolen from what was to be given to God. But what I wanted to focus is not on the actual cross, like a fail, but how God tells them, stand up, what are you doing? Like, isn't that what God is telling us today? Like, hey, you have a problem, what are you doing? Get up from it. I don't want to see it like that. I don't want to, he's our father. The last thing he wants to do is see each one of you on the floor with ripped clothes and dust in your, in your hair. Right? So here we have Joshua this made discouraged, shattered, broken down. And God tells them, let's, you know, get up. In our walk with God, many things will change. Not only ourselves, but the things that are problems. They must cause us to feel discouraged. And that has happened throughout my life. When I started, you know, when I started coming to the Word and I started to learn and get to have that relationship with God, everybody changed with me. They thought, oh, she's an outcast now, like, I don't know what's gotten into her. I don't want to know whatever it is. That, and at first, I was like, what is going on? Like, why are people, like, instead of coming to me, believe me? And that can also bring the discourage and the despair. Because you, at that time, you're not really firm in the word. And you're just like, okay, am I doing right or am I doing wrong? For many, uh, I believe, what, I want to say, what, that was going to be three years, and my family was like that too. So that's something else, you know, that adds up to that. Your family doesn't want to really be there because of what you, you're you doing. When you might be doing something that is not even wrong. But like I said, that's what happens. Your, your problems change. You're no longer having money problems because God provides. But your problems are like, oh, she's weird. Or, you know what, I can talk to you about anything else. Like, I was actually telling Mabel this a couple weeks ago. I'm like, I am, you know, I invited so many women to the woman advance. And none of them answered. But I invited them to a baby shower and oh, thank you for the invite. You know, like, I'm here like, all right. 
so the problem changes, right? Uh, the situation changes. Okay, so let's continue. <laughs> uh, for Joshua, he was dismayed so that the battle he had lost. With us, we're not dismayed because we don't, our battle is not with people anymore. Our battle is with the adversary out there. He He's the one that we're fighting with because he's the one that wants us our peace to be gone, everything to be gone. Everything that is gained with, with what God has given us, he wants to take it away from us. Let's go to second uh, Thessalonians 3.3. 3. and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. So, like I said, our fight is not with people like for Joshua. Our fight is with the evil. But what is the word telling us? That the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect us from that evil. Many of you guys have heard or uh, know this well-known verse that John 10, 10, right? He wants to steal that. He wants to take our peace away, everything. And that's what we allow him to do when we go back and we're on the floor and we feel broken. Let's go to Philippians 4, 12 and 13. And if, uh, Delia, do you mind reading that for us? Philippians 4, 12, 13. Yeah, for 12 and 30. I know both how to be based and I know how to about everything where in all things I'm instructed both to be bold and to be hungry, both abound and suffer need. 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Okay, thank you. I have the NIV and it says a little different. I, I, I like to look at different versions just so you know, get a better idea. It's always great. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether we feed, oh, sorry, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through Him who gives me strength. We always look at that verse, uh, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. That's like, oh, I'm like, you know, super powerful. But it's like, I can do anything in any situation. Like, even if I'm having, you know, I'm down on the floor, I know that, you know, that I have, that I can do it. I'm going to get up because you have God. Not because I can do it, but because God is able. Isaiah 40, 29, 31. I think we pretty much memorized this one since we all have touched it. And it says, He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Ah, oh, so he God gives us strength when we are we're dismayed, when we feel like there's no way out, and increases the power of the weak. Even, even the youth grows tired and weary. And young men stumble and fall. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna fall. We're gonna, you know, we're young. Sometimes we want to do things that are we know that are not right. Sometimes the world is going to try to wrap us up around it. But what do we gotta do? We gotta remember that that we have something more. We have something humongous and we have the privilege to be able to be young and be able to learn now. If I I always tell everybody I was like I was telling Angelina last night too, I'm like, you know, it's amazing to to see how she's sixteen and she you know, God 
gave that opportunity to know about the word. Like Delia, I always tell Delia, I'm like, man, I would have loved to grow up in the word. I mean, yeah, it's the experiences you get, it's, you know, to where you're at, it's amazing. But I, I tell Josh too, I'm like, hey, you're so, like, blessed. Not everybody has the opportunity. And it's amazing to be able to experience it with them. So, yeah, we're going to stumble, but we're going to get up. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength, and they will sorrow wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary, and they will walk and not be faint. I was actually, Delia pointed out that there was eagles outside um, when we were having lunch today. No, breakfast this morning. And I was looking at them, and I, the verse came to my mind, and I was just like, oh, wow, it is true. Like, here they are. Because I did not get tired, I'm flapping and flapping, and I'm like, I would have been tired already. <laughs> like, whoever went on that walk on the stairs, I don't know how you guys did. <laughs> <laughs> Romans 5, 1 through 5. Romans 5, verse 1 through 5. It says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that the suffering produce uh, perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. So like Jessica mentioned in her teaching, like, yeah, we have the Spirit. We have a little bit of what God is in us. Like, isn't that so much more? I mean, not everybody has that. So if we have that, why not remember that? Another uh, verse that I want to take a look before I continue, 2 Timothy 1, uh, 7. Just to remind us a little of what God has given us. 2 Timothy 1, 7. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but give us power, love, and self-discipline. So can you imagine, you don't, we're not supposed to be fear or anything. We're not supposed, no matter whatever situation comes, uh, I'm sure I'm going to mention it, like renewing our mind, not that I'm going to mention it too. We have God's word, we have it in our hand. It's not something we don't have. You just have to remember that it's there. And Romans 8, 18. Was like, 
oh, what are you going to do tomorrow? Like, and I remember I, I would be always like, oh, I have to do this, I have to do that. And there's a time where, like, oh, we were actually talking about that. I'm a really person that likes to plan ahead of time. But it used to be worse. <laughs> it's gotten <kind of> better. <laughs> so Adelia, like, freaks out because it's like, I don't know how you do You're always bugging me about it, but... But I'm like, yeah, she wouldn't know me before. Um, it's just, I can't, I can't uh, imagine how I used to think about stuff so much. Like, I would think about so much of the problem instead of focusing on what God was telling me. Like, he gets, you know, he was, then I learned to have patience. And uh, sometimes I think that's the hardest. <laughs> that is the hardest to go through, but it is possible. It, it was very hard to find like something where somebody was really like discouraged to the point that they're not going to get up because God gives us that strength. God gives us the courage, and um, like like Joshua, like yeah, he he was he was on this, you know, he tore his clothes, he was on the floor, but. His victories, everything he did was much bigger than the problem. And now that, like I said, now that we have spirit, we are like his children. We're God's children. We're not just someone out there in the world. Like I always tell everybody, though, but this person was, they have this, they have that. Who cares? You have something more valuable. Like who, the, the God that created the heavens and the earth is your father. Is that something more bigger than what you can actually gain out there? No. So, remember, do not be dismayed because God does not want to see us like that. And every single time that a problem comes, remember, God always says, get up, get up, because I do not want to see you like that. 